A prospect would need an average of seven touch points with you before they buy. That's actually mind blowing. So many people will probably lose their self esteem before they follow up. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kiva Chris Amuso. I am an online marketing and business coach. And this is the best place for course creators, coaches, or service providers that are tired of erratic sales and you just want predictable and consistent income. If you've been getting lots of inquiries, but no sales, you're going to love this video because that's what we're talking about. Three reasons why you're not getting clients. So let me just be a sharpshooter. What are these three reasons? It's either because people do not know you, they do not like you, or they do not trust you. I call this the KLT framework, and this is how I work with my clients who are trying to get from erratic sales to predictable income. About people knowing you, this is simply visibility. I spoke about this in my last video. You can check it, I'm gonna link it up here. But I'm sure you know that someone finding you on the internet, the fact that someone knows you, the fact that you've positioned yourself online, does not necessarily mean they will buy from you. So how do you get someone who already knows you to like you and trust you? I like to say that it's best you go in for that trust factor right from the point where people are getting to know you. There's something called the buyer's journey. It's a technical term we use in marketing, but I'm going to try to break it down. So let's take Tasha. She's trying to learn how to spice up her marriage. And in terms of no, we're thinking, where does Tasha go when she's trying to solve this problem? So Tasha is most likely going to go online, type into Google. She could also go on a girl group. So maybe she's in a community of women. She could go there to type this problem. Let's just take these two examples. So no means that you are going to position yourself where Tasha is already searching. Whether this is through your blog, your vlog, posting on some channel, running an ad, whatever. But you would need to be targeting Tasha. In certain that trust factor, would mean that you're showing up, like you're coming correct with content that will make Tasha be like, whoa, wait a minute, like this person is reading my emails. Good content is actually a very, very good way to do this. But it doesn't end there. The fact that someone knows you doesn't mean they will buy from you. So in this case, when Tasha was searching online, wherever it was she was searching, she came across your content. But did she send you a message? Do you even have Tasha's number? Do you even have her email? If Tasha just reads your content and goes away, that was like such a waste of marketing, right? So you need to be thinking about how to get Tasha's contact. And the best way to do that is something we call the lead magnet. The lead magnet is a free piece of content, very valuable, delivers a quick win to the person who is reading your content. And it also establishes a way for you to maintain contact and build a relationship with them. What you need to be taking from this is don't just slave and put out all this marketing effort Someone is landing on your website, you're not finding a way to get their contact from them. Another way to do this, I'll call this like a sly way, it's not a sly way, but a good way, a smart way to do this is with retargeting ads. When you set up your ads, you can install a piece of code on your website that ensures that wherever people go on the internet, you start to follow them around because they landed on your website or because they landed on your Instagram page. You need to See this as you're building a relationship. It's very, very important for me to add at this point that you can't use a crappy mm. magnet, you guys, because it's like you want to catch fish. If they don't eat the bait, nothing. So you need to think about what exactly would Tasha see that will make her sign up. So I, I go on some people's websites and then I see they just put their sign up for a newsletter. Like, what is your newsletter? Why do I need your newsletter? Why should I sign up for your newsletter? So except if you always have hot gist, that's when I would do that. But if I don't know you, from Adam, you would need to give me something, something I can work with. A very good product example for one of my businesses at one point was we were doing wedding jewelry and we would use a free ring sizer. Why? Because guys or girls, they want to know their ring size when they're about to get a ring. Or we were telling the guy, let's show you how to get her ring size without her knowing. That is a pressing problem for someone at that point, right? So if we have a blog post on that, we're telling you, give us your email address, give us your, your phone number, give us your address, we'll send you a free ring sizer. That is very smart, right? So you need to figure out what the equivalent of that is for you. Now that you've moved this person from a stranger to what I would call a prospect, the next step is moving them to becoming a customer. And guess what? You cannot make this person a customer if they don't trust you. But remember that I've said that if you come correct 
and you're putting up content that is really positioning you like you know your stuff, people will already start to trust you. If they're already seeing testimonials of stuff that you've done, they will already start to trust you. Now, you need to move the prospects to becoming a customer. There are four things you should do. The first is, like I already said, you're coming correct, meaning you're giving good value. The second is be available because when someone reaches out to you, how long does it take before they get a response? Thirdly, you need to ask for the sale. This is one thing that people do not do. The simplest way to ask for the sale is using what I call call to actions. We call it CTA for short. And call to action means that you're using verb or action words to tell them what you want them to do. So you're saying, click the link below to subscribe. <laughs> For example, so you need to use action words and action words are typically verbs. The final thing is you need to follow up. So there's this thing we say in sales and marketing and it's that a prospect would need an average of seven touch points with you before they buy. That's actually mind blowing. It's crazy. So many people will probably lose their self-esteem before they follow up. They're like, um, yeah, this person has reached out to me, but I don't know. I'm not sure this person is feeling me and you're not following up. Some of us are not even like mindful. Someone has done something, they booked a call, we're not checking. It's like you're not expecting the sales. Maybe you don't want the money. Maybe you make the money and you know send it to me. So you need to be very, very careful to ensure that you follow up. You can't do all this hard work and not you know, tie it in. I think that this topic of follow-up is like such a big one, and I'm going to talk about it in my next video, so you can't afford to miss that. But remember, you need an average of seven touch points. So you need to figure out what that is for you. If someone is DMing you, whether that means setting a reminder or someone is emailing you, you can even schedule these messages ahead. You know, I have some hacks, some really good hacks on how to help you follow up and I'll talk about them in the next video. In the meantime, I do have a training that breaks all of this down, makes it very, very simple and you can sign up for that. The link is in the description below. Sign up for that training and trust me, you're about to move from having erratic sales to literally like, Let's know what we're doing. Let's build a business that is actually giving us predictable income. See you in the next video.